Hello everybody, it's Mr. Second Amendment and uh, like all my videos that I always say this one is long overdue should have been done a while back better late than never I suppose um, this is basically as the title describes this is basically kind of an introductory in a nutshell description or, or kind of a introduction to the AR-15 rifle okay this is not meant to be all inclusive really the purpose of this video is to educate those who don't really know or understand exactly what the AR-15 is um, and, and really, you know, because we, we hear this all the time, the politicians, uh, the, the gun control groups, and the pro-gun, and every community you can think of is throwing around the word AR-15, or the phrase, and they're throwing around, you know, this and that, and it has these features, and it's capable of doing this, and there's a lot of misinformation. You're just being bombarded with just information and, and opinions and whatnot, and this is me just trying to cut through that red tape and, and cut through the confusion and just to get you you know, acquainted with the facts of what this rifle is about, what it is, where it came from, and, you know, what the features are, what it is, essentially. So, you know, I have future videos, cleaning videos, disassembly videos, all that stuff planned for later, but right now, this is just to get you acquainted. Like I said, this is geared more towards those who are just seeking information, honest, reliable information about what the rifle is and, and why it's, it's in the public eye, why it's in the news right now and all that stuff. Okay, so just going to jump into it. Um, you know, this rifle comes from the M16, which was designed by Eugene Stoner and his guys. They were working at Armalite at the time, machining uh, corporation, whatnot. And uh, basically, they were looking to find a solution to make or engineer a better rifle um, for the military and possibly for civilians as well. But they were looking into finding. Uh, new. Uh, let me back up. The way that this, the reason why this rifle, it kind of has its own signature, and the reason why this rifle is kind of, they got a kickstart uh, in infamy basically, is because it was using, uh, at the time, space age, crazy new age materials to make the gun. Okay, because the guns before that, like the U.S. military's M14 and M1 Garand, the rifles that had gone before this rifle, they were all steel, all wood and basically huge heavy battle rifles shooting huge heavy cartridges. Okay, so the Department of Defense leading up to Vietnam, they were looking for a rifle that shot a smaller cartridge so the men could carry more ammo for the same weight cost and something that where the gun itself was lighter with maybe better or more effective, more efficient design features within it. Okay, so Eugene Stoner, they came up with the AR-10. It was later scaled down to 5.56 NATO, basically making the M16. Okay, later on they made the M4 carbine, the Commando series, a whole bunch of other things. But basically the same basic inherent design has remained basically the same since the late 50s, early 60s, when this rifle was being first uh, designed, engineered, and then fielded with the U.S. military in Vietnam. Okay, now this this is something that you definitely need to know is, you know, the AR-15, people keep saying, oh, because of the, the assault weapons ban, uh, sunsetting and lapsing in 2004, um, all of a sudden ARs flooded the market and now everyone has one. And uh, that's not necessarily true because it actually really isn't because the AR-15, believe it or not, has been available for civilian purchase. It's been in civilian hands since the since for 50 years, since the 1960s. It's been in civilian hands for 50 years and counting now. Okay, so this is not a rifle that is brand new that all of a sudden everyone has because the 2004 crime bill expired and and then everyone went crazy and booked and bought one because they were now all of a sudden available. Okay, every, the civilian populace has had the AR-15s for 50 years. All right, and there is something we need to know is that what you see in front of you from, from the uneducated eye for, or for someone who just doesn't know, which is okay, all right, this looks like a machine gun is what a lot of people say. That's the first thing I hear people say when they don't know really the situation on this rifle. They say, oh, that's a machine gun. Look at that. First of all, it's not. It's not by a nomenclature standpoint, and it's not by a legal standpoint. That is the... the Div that is the factor right there, basically, people, that is going to separate the AR-15 rifle from the military M16 or the military M4. The AR-15 civilian rifle, which is what you see before you, is a semi-automatic rifle only. 
Okay, which means you now people say we need to ban these semi autos or we need to ban these automatic guns. Okay, that's the difference. Semi automatic, one trigger pull disperses one round, one bullet downrange, and that is it. Okay, full auto or burst or anything full auto, which would legally be classified as a machine gun, will disperse multiple rounds upon only one trigger pull. Okay, now that is illegal unless you have. Uh, that could be a whole other video, but unless you have the lice, the gun itself, the tax stamp on it, and background check and all that other crazy stuff that Class 3 firearms take, you can't legally possess or own a full auto unless you go through all that. Okay, and that's when people say, you know, we need an assault weapons ban to, you know, limit access and whatnot. And that's when I surprise them and I tell them, look, you don't understand this, but we already have an assault weapons ban still in effect today. And it's the 1934 National Firearms Act. It banned full autos, suppressors, short-barreled rifles and shotguns, and all kinds of other guns. Um, so we already have, it still is, as it was written, it still is the law of the land today. We still have, that is, in my opinion, the actual assault weapons legislation that we have right now. We don't need any additional ones, in my opinion. And we'll get into that. Okay, so this is the main difference. Um, military... M4, M16 is full auto or burst, usually burst. And the civilian version, uh, the parts in, internally are different, but the main functional difference is the fact that it only fires one shot at a time, semi-auto. And I'll show you, okay, so the weapon's empty, there's nothing in the chamber, there's no magazine inserted. Okay, so right here, all I have, this is my safety, by the way, so right now it's pointed the safe. And I can flip it to fire if I was ready to shoot. Now it is okay to fire. Now it's on safe, right? So the civilian version, you have safe and you have fire. Okay, on the military version, you have safe, you have semi, and then you have burst or auto, depending on what it is. Okay, so that is the main core difference. There's, there's differences all over this gun that are going to be different from the M4 or the M16 of the military, but the main core difference between that and a civilian AR-15 rifle is the fact that it is semi-automatic only. It does not do selective fire, burst, auto, any of that stuff. And like I said, the internals, and I'll go ahead and flip that right there, and I'll open up the AR and show you just at a nutshell. All right, these internal parts within what's called the lower receiver, which is this, these parts are actually not the same at all to the military parts. And this lower receiver, actually, if you somehow had access to or you had possession of the full auto military parts that actually go would go in this, they physically will not fit. This civilian AR-15 lower receiver will physically not accept military full auto parts, and that's just the way it goes. Okay, so for the average Joe, when they buy this type of gun in a gun shop or whatnot, all right, basically there is no way that the average person would ever have access to or have the ability or the knowledge or the machine or anything to make this full auto. This is going to be semi-auto only. Okay, so there's no concerns there. All right, now, now people say, and, and it's kind of, it's hurting our argument, it's hurting our cause, but some people will say sometimes, well, oh, the civilian AR-15 is nothing like the military M4 or M16, and that's frankly not true. You know, I will be honest, because I, I want honesty in this debate, and I want clear-cut information. There are many parts on this rifle that will interchange perfectly with the military M4 or M16. And inversely, there's parts from those rifles that will fit and be used perfectly on this rifle. Excuse me, on this rifle. Okay, but again, the core difference, at least with the lower receiver, and that's what we call, you can see, this is the lower receiver and this is the upper receiver. People, in slang, they'll call this the lower and the upper. Okay, but people... You gotta know that this does not fire full auto and it never will. Okay, to do that, the average Joe just doesn't have the parts or, or the knowledge or, or anything to even do that. So it's just not possible, as is right now. Okay, so that's, it's just like, nomenclature wise, it is a semi automatic rifle. It sits in the same category as a Ruger 1022 or a Remington Woods Master or anything like that. So this is a semi automatic rifle. And now we've got to talk about, you know, so we we got a general idea of what's going on here, but why is this gun so popular? Okay, and I will tell you, being a firearm salesman, working in multiple gun shops, selling guns in different states, 
uh, throughout my time, I will tell you that the AR-15, in my opinion, is, if not one of the most common, it is the most common rifle in the United States right now. Many people own an AR-15 out of any gun I've ever sold. The, the common denominator, the one that I've sold the most of, that we chronically just sell the most of all the time, is an AR-15. Why is that? Well, you know, there's many reasons for that, but in a nutshell, one of the reasons, you know, I have a little list, is first of all, it's easy to use, okay? It, it takes a little bit of time to learn how to use, but once you get the basics and you learn what's going on with this rifle and you learn how to operate it, it's actually relatively pretty easy to use. It doesn't require a whole lot of strength to operate the bolt mechanism. The controls and the ergonomics of where the safety and the mag release and the bolt release are, all the controls on the gun are actually very ergonomic, very easy to use, very well thought out. Okay, so that means that initially any type of shooter or any type of marksman or any type of uh, sportsman is going to be able to really pick this up and, and be really good with just from the start. Very uh, easy to use once you get the hang of it. Another reason is that this gun can be modified to accommodate any shooter. You can see with uh, basically this six, this is a six position adjustable stock. There's many other models and types and makes out there that basically you can see that I can adjust this stock depending on the frame size of the shooter. So if I'm shooting it, I have it all the way out. Maybe if a girlfriend is shooting it, she's going to have it all the way in. Maybe if someone's going to be shooting in the middle, they can put it there. Okay, so this gun can be adjusted and configured to accommodate any type of shooter. And that's another thing is what makes it so popular is this rifle is very easily modified. Okay, every part on this rifle can be switched out with many other parts on the market, at least in a normal market, that you can find and switch them out with. Um, basically, you can take a bag of parts at the most uh, primitive, most broken down, most disassembled methods. You could take all the parts, all the bare bones parts in a bag, and with basic common tools you'll find in pretty much mostly any garage, you can basically assemble this rifle. And you need an armorer's tool, and it's a weird looking tool, but every if you see all these notches and everything, you have everything you need to replace barrels, butt stocks, and do all the major operations on the gun. And all the other smaller operations, you just utilize basic tools that you have around the house. Okay, so that's what makes this gun so common and so uh, easy to use and, and so prevalent is because you can take parts, you can order them from different places for pretty cheap, and you can literally build your rifle from the ground up. You'll probably hear a lot of people say that, you know, oh, I built this AR, I did that, and I built another one, or, you know, I'm going to go build at home or whatnot. That's what they're talking about is you can literally buy the lower receiver, which is this part right here. You can buy this by itself and add everything else later. Okay, by the ATF, um, by the government standards, okay, this right here is actually the firearm. This piece of aluminum right here. Okay, that is actually the firearm. So you can buy that. You can buy a lower receiver, which before all this craziness was happening, you could get them for like 100 bucks, 150 bucks. All right, you buy you buy that and then you buy all the parts, literally everything else, including this whole upper receiver, you can have shipped to your home and just build it at home. So you know, a father and son can build a rifle together that they, that they can use together. Okay, it's a hobby rifle, it's a sportsman's rifle because you can take it hunting for various types of hunting, coyote, varmint, um, stuff like that. You can put a different upper receiver on it with a heavier caliber to go deer hunting and whatnot. So there's a lot of if you look at the grand spectrum of all kinds of rifle shooting in the United States, all kinds of the different areas of rifle shooting that you could possibly be doing, the AR-15 can pretty much accommodate virtually every type of rifle shooting you can imagine in this country. Okay, so that is one of the major reasons why it is hugely popular. Also, another thing is, at least in a normal market, the ammunition is relatively easy to find, is very common and it's very cheap, at least usually. Right now that's not not the case, but in a normal market that it's very common, it's everywhere. Okay, so it looks like we got that pretty much covered. Um, moving on, you know, I, I want to talk about the the rifle itself. You know, obviously we've talked about the basic features, but you know, if, if they're wanting to ban these rifles, well, how how many crimes or how much crime is actually committed 
um, with this type of gun or, or even rifles in general. And if you actually look at all the FBI research and you look at all the government studies, all the non-government, all the neutral, non-partisan studies, everything that has actually been conducted, all the numbers and statistics, you will actually find, it will surprise you that this type of rifle has been used in less than 1% of all gun-related crime. Literally, look it up right now. All right, and that is because most crime is committed with handguns. All right, so, you know, if they even wanted to tackle the problem adequately and actually look at what is actually used to commit most or majority of your national gun crimes, they should be looking at handguns if they're going to be looking at anything. Because this, although this looks scary, this looks like this came straight out of Afghanistan or something, or, or looks like it belongs in a police cruiser. But in reality, it's a semi-automatic rifle that shoots a relatively light cartridge. Okay, so, you know, going back to the cartridge, what I have right here, okay, this is, I'll put them side by side. This is a 30 out 6 Okay, that's going about 2,700 feet per second. This is a common hunting cartridge. Very powerful. You can use this to take down elk, deer, anything like that. All right, that's a 30 out 6 Completely legal and completely out of the limelight. Completely out of the news. Nothing is said or talked about. This is the cartridge that the M M16 M4 Air 15 family of rifles shoots. This is a 5.56 cartridge. The 223 looks exactly the same externally. Uh, and you can see the size difference, and if you were to look at the ballistic charts, this is a far superior long-range round. It has more power and whatnot, and somehow, because this looks scary or it's been associated with some things like the Colorado shooting or the uh, Newtown situation, right? It, all of a sudden it's in the spotlight because it looks scary and and then people start to ask well you know why should anybody need an assault rifle and that is a big question you know I'm sure everybody has probably asked or wondered about that in some way why would anybody need something like this well hopefully what I've already talked about has hopefully answered most of those questions all right but you could go hunting with it you can do marksman shooting with it um, NRA high power uh, rifle shooting competitions every time I go up to compete Every, pretty much everyone has an AR-15. I'm the odd man out with an M1 Garand. Everyone has an AR-15 because they're accurate, they're very common, and for all the reasons I listed. Okay, so there's a lot of uses for this gun. All right, I would even argue that this is a good personal defense gun, a personal defense weapon, all right, PDW. And, you know, it's, it's ironic, I guess you could say, when the government is buying the full auto version of this, the actual military rifle, the M4 carbine, when the military does that, or not, not the military, when the federal government, the Department of Homeland Security and all those guys are buying this as a full auto firearm, they call it a personal defense weapon. But when me, law-abiding citizen, when the average Joe is buying the, the semi-automatic only version, they're calling that an assault rifle. Okay, so I find that ironic that when they buy the full auto version, the military, the straight up military version, it's called a personal defense weapon. All right, but when I'm trying to defend my family or I'm trying to defend my house when there's riots or looting or Hurricane Katrina or whatever is happening, all of a sudden it's an assault rifle that I shouldn't have. Okay, so this is a very valuable rifle. It's easy to use. The ergonomics make sense. The controls are all easy to hit and get to. It's very light, so it could be carried over distance if I had to. It's very easy to use. It's very portable, at least in this configuration. All right, and the magazine, standard magazine capacity, standard capacity, I'm not saying high capacity, I'm saying standard capacity, which is what it is, is 30 rounds. A 30 round magazine for this rifle series is standard capacity for this weapon. All right. They only make them in 10 rounders because that is somebody's asinine idea of public safety. All right. But the standard capacity magazine for this weapon series is a 30 round magazine. That is the standard. Okay, so I, 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 it just kills me when these politicians and whatnot who know nothing about these guns, they say that those are high capacity magazines. When you tell me that they have, you know, when you refer to high capacity magazine, I'm thinking of a 100 round beta mag or I'm thinking of a snail drum or something huge. And I'm surprised when they say, oh, this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying high capacity magazine. It's not a high capacity magazine. This is the standard. This is everywhere in the world for this rifle. This is what it is. It's 30 rounds. Okay, so, you know, we got to get that straight right away. And um, 
you know, a lot of people are still going to be scratching their head wondering, you know, why would a civilian need something like this? And I'll tell you right now, um, you know, I grew up in Southern California, lived through the 94 uh, North, North Ridge earthquake. And, you know, at certain parts of the city in Los Angeles, there was looting, rioting, all kinds of craziness was happening. And, you know, of course, the Watts riots and the, you know, the race riots and the O.J. Simpson situation. And it seems like nowadays, every time the Lakers play a, a ball game, whether they win or lose, there's got to be some crazy riot or something. So, you know, I've, I've seen firsthand, I've witnessed lawlessness and absolute anarchy on a grand scale in a city. Okay, so I, I will tell you right now, if somebody, or, or just like what happened in Hurricane Katrina, when there's gangs of looters and rapists and criminals just roving the streets at night, patrolling the streets, there's no street lights, there's no 911, there's no organized society has completely collapsed for weeks on end, there's, there's limited resources and there's criminals and everybody lo roving the streets at night. All right, it is going to, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to be real happy that you have something like this. All right, you have this, something that looks like this, something that has the capabilities that this thing does. All right, and it's going to be slung across the front side of you, just hanging out on your front lawn outside your house. The criminals and looters and whatnot, they are going to look at that and they are going to realize that it is time to pick a softer target. That that street or that neighborhood or that household is not going to be messed with today. Okay, now if it's not that much of a deterrent, you have, if you actually have to, you know, look beyond the situation, you actually have to utilize it to save your life, it, bl it brings plenty of firepower, plenty of capability to save your life. It is a asset, not a hazard to your own safety and the safety of your community. If we had another earthquake or another huge Hurricane Sandy, Hurricane Katrina, where good people are just getting pillaged and killed and raped and looted from, and there's no Mr. Law Enforcement Officer there to stop it, okay, and there needs to be some form of order, this is going to be a very valuable thing to have. Okay, and I, I can't support the notion that law enforcement is always going to be there to save you or help you. You know, that, that's a whole other video, but they're not there as your private bodyguards. And in the case of Hurricane Katrina, when neighborhoods were just cut off for weeks on end, they physically could not be, you know, reached or, or could not be accessed to, or the law enforcement didn't even show up the next day to put on the uniform. All right, you, you may be in a situation where you have to protect your own family. It's, it might come down to that. Now, I hope not. And it's very few and far between. It's not common, but it does happen even in our modern era. That is something that does happen all the time. And it could happen to you. So you're going to be real happy that you have something like this to protect your family with. And I think that everyone has a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Maybe that's just me, but that's what I think. And I think if I'm trying to save my life or protect my family, then I should have access to the best tool to get the job done. In this case, a personal defense weapon, an AR-15. Okay, I can employ it that way. I can employ it as a hunting rifle. There's so much I can do with it that we already talked about. So th this, is, this is why I would make the argument that yes, you know, this is something that Americans should be able to own. And it is not the place of any politician or any government to tell me that my life is just not worth saving and I'm restricted to 10 round mags or I have to use this or that or a double barreled shotgun that I'm going to shoot in the air. Thank you, Mr. Joe Biden. Um, no, I'm not going to be relegated to that. I'm not going to be told that my life is not worth protecting or I can only protect my life if I'm using these types of guns, but these types of guns are just too scary and too dangerous and you're too stupid to handle them. I will not be told that because it's simply not true. It's just a ploy to, to get me to give up guns and eventually restrict what we have, which is freedom. So, you know, hopefully this video has, is, for those of you who are not aware or, or really not familiar with the AR-15 rifle, hopefully this has gotten you a little bit of familiarity with the rifle itself and you know hopefully you can take from it what you will totally uh you know always ask for comments in the comments area and uh, just thank you so much for watching and uh, hopefully this helped clear up some confusion all right